Hi, everybody. Um, this is the start of the class. And I'm going to show you how to use the TI-30XS calculator. It's a really good calculator. And I really recommend uh, getting one of these. Uh, so let's take a look. By the way, you can use any calculator you want for this course. Uh, any scientific calculator, but I really recommend the TI-30X. And mine is a TI-30XS because it's solar. So, so I'm going to look at this first problem here, 5, 6 minus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. Um, we don't have time in this 1332 to go over and teach you everything about how to do fractions. Um, so we use this calculator because we want to get to the actual coursework. So this calculator is really important for this class. So let's show you how to type this into the calculator and your calculator is going to do all the work for you. All right, so here's my calculator. Once again, the TI-30XS. I think I can, uh, oh, I'll probably just do this. There we go. Um, let's turn it on and work out that first problem. That first problem was a fraction. And in the TI-30XS, do you see this ND button? That creates a fraction. If I push it, I have a fraction. And it was 5 over 6, so 5 on top. If I use this arrow down button, I can put the 6 in there. Then I can arrow over out of the fraction. It was 5, 6 minus 2 thirds, so another fraction. So I hit fraction, 2, and then arrow down to thirds. Arrow over to get out of the fraction. Uh, another fraction, it's uh, plus 3 fourths. So now I'm going to do plus another fraction and 3 fourths. And I'm going to arrow out of the fraction. And we have everything typed in all at once. So once you have everything typed in, and that's how we're going to do everything in this course, we're going to type it all in. Sorry, we're going to type it all in and then hit enter and it's going to give us an answer. And our answer is 11 over 12. So they gave us the answer. If we go back to the workbook, you can see the answer down here. Eleven over twelve. So it's really important to be able to use this calculator correctly to get through this course. Uh, there is so much work here, um, so we need to understand how to use it. All right. So let's go to this next problem. I'm going to try this one. This is a multiplication problem. So it's. 22 over 45 times 5 over 11. Okay, so I'm going to come back here. Fraction 22 over 45. Arrow over time. So this is a multiply times a fraction. 5 over 11. And I get 2 over 9 as my answer. So when I come back to the workbook, you notice I have 2 over 9 as my answer. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, if you're if you have a scientific calculator that does that, that's fine. But I really recommend this because when we get into the financial formulas later in this chapter, 
uh, oh, I promise you, you're going to want, you're going to want uh, this calculator. Also, if you scroll up, I, I'm in the workbook, by the way. If you scroll up, wait, or maybe down. <laughs> so we did all this. Well, we did some of that. If you come down here to the problem we just we, we were just looking at, um, they tell you how to type everything in. It, do you see? It actually says, oh, hit the ND button on your calculator, then hit five, then arrow down and type in six, arrow over, type in the subtraction, hit the fraction button to create a fraction, type in two, arrow down, type in three, arrow over, type in the plus symbol. So they actually go through the key movements for the TI-30X. Uh, the S part, once again, of this calculator, it means it's, it's solar, it doesn't have a battery, it's solar. Uh, it uses the light to, uh, to operate its battery or it to, to uh, just operate. So it's a really good calculator. Uh, really recommend that. So I would practice it, come here, practice it, and try that out. Also, try out it, try it out with signed numbers because it's not easy. And I think they're gonna do, are they gonna yes, <laughs> they show you um, how to use the calculator on this also. So let's take a look, and I'm going to just show you one of them. This first problem, negative 5 plus parentheses negative 8. So you need to type it in is that exactly as you see it. So that's what I'm going to do. So first, it's negative 5. You can watch what happens when I hit subtract. It says you're subtracting something from an answer, but we don't have an answer. So I can't use subtraction as a negative. To hit negative five, down here is the negative button. So that's negative, then five, plus, then it said use the parentheses. So here's a parentheses and negative eight. So this is the negative symbol, negative eight. Close the parentheses, and we have exactly as it looks in the in the workbook. Now, when we hit enter, it's going to give us our answer of negative thirteen. Okay, so practice those using your calculator. You need to be able to do those automatically. Uh, so when we get to the real math, uh, this is just comes second nature, <coughs> and you're not making any uh, calculator error. All righty. So let's see. Let's try number nine. If you look at number nine, um, that's a multiplication problem. I just want to make sure everybody understands. If you don't see anything in between, that means it's a multiplication problem. So if we type in everything exactly as we see it, uh, we should get a positive 18. So on my calculator, it says type in parentheses, negative three, close parentheses, and then it does, even though there's nothing there, it means multiply, let's just type it in. We don't have to type the multiply symbol in. Uh, negative six, close parentheses. So I have negative three times negative six. When I hit enter, the answer is positive 18. So if you type it in exactly as you see it, you're going to get the correct answer. And that takes practice, especially for the negatives and the subtractions. You got to be careful. The, those are negatives. Uh, so you have to use that parentheses negative button. Let me show you one that has uh, other things. 
Here's one that I want. Uh, let's try number five here. So I want to try this because it's really important to understand the difference between a negative and a subtraction. Uh, and they both look the same. But do you notice if I hit subtract three, it's going to give me an error. If there's not a number in front of uh, it, the sign, then this is a negative. You have to use that button. If there is a number in front like this, this is a subtraction. So watch how I type this problem in. So it's, do you see, once again, if I hit subtract it three, it messes everything up. It takes a last answer and I'm subtracting three from it. So I have to hit negative three and then subtract six. And we, if we hit this, that's going to mess everything. I think it might mess everything up. Yes, it gives me an error uh, because that was a negative button. So negative three uh, and negative six doesn't do anything. But subtract six. So using the subtraction button, negative three minus six equals a negative nine. So you see when you type it on the calculator, the negative is a small symbol but the subtraction is bigger however you can't see the difference when you're looking at it just know if there's not a number or something in front of the number like a parentheses or another number then it's a negative if there is a number in front of it th then it's a s subtraction symbol And once again, here they show you all the keystrokes. Do you see uh, negative three, then subtract six? Do you see the difference between the way they show a negative and a subtraction symbol when you're doing these? Order of operations. Uh, the order of operations are parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide from left to right, add and subtract from left to right. Um, we want to type this in exactly as we see it. I wonder if this, yes, <laughs> this actually takes you through the end, all the keystrokes you need also. So let's see if I can do this, this particular problem. 45 divided by 3 squared times the square root of 25 plus 3 times 7 squared. So I'm going to type in this problem, example 1, in my calculator. So it starts off with 45 divided by, so I go to the divide symbol. Then it says 3 squared, so I'm going to hit 3 and then raise it to the second power. 3 to the second power uh, to get something. By the way, you can just hit this button and it is square it. Uh, I'm not going to use that button because that only squares. What if I wanted to go to the third power? Uh, so I'm going to do start over. 45 divided by 3, and I want to raise it to the second power. This caret, this arrow up button, watch what happens when I push it. It raises the blank spot up. Then I put a 2, raise it to the second power. That blank spot is still up there, so I'm going to arrow over and get it out of there. 45 divided by 3, raised to the second power. Then it says times the square root. And our square root symbol is right above the x squared. You see it's right there, right above this x squared. So to get to it, you have to hit second x squared do you see and then the square root will pop up it says square root of 25 now i got to get out of the square root symbol by arrowing over then it says plus three times seven raised to the second power raised to the second power now i have everything in typed in exactly as i see it in the workbook when I hit enter, I get 172. And once again, 
Uh, it does all the work for us, the calculator. If you notice, we got 172. So the calculator does the order of operations. The order of operations says do this first. Square root of 25 is 5. Uh, then you have to do this first. Uh, by the way, 7 squared is 49. Then you have to go from left to right. 45 divided by 9 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, then you have to multiply this together. Um, and then you add. The order of operations says do all the parentheses, exponents, and square roots first. Then multiply and divide from left to right then add and subtract. So practice these, type them on your calculator. Uh, once again, if you look in the workbook, they give you the keystrokes for typing these things in. Um, you really need to get some good practice in typing all this stuff in. Uh, look, here's even some fractions, uh, and they give you the answers to it uh, as some practice. Okay, so that is how to use your calculator. I hope that helped. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at all.